Hello, calculus students. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the epsilon delta definition of a limit. We're going to use that to prove that um, a limit exists and is equal to a certain uh, number. Okay. And so, uh, with that said, let's begin. Uh, in this example, it says use the epsilon delta definition of a limit to prove that the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals negative 2. Now, if we're going to begin this process, the first thing we need to do is a little bit of scratch work. Okay, so let me uh, go ahead and label that here. We're just going to call this some scratch work. All right. Now, with the scratch work, you just kind of want to set yourself up so you can structure this proof in the right way. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to keep in mind Right? I want to look at this f of x minus l part of the definition, which is less than epsilon. I'm going to look at this, and I want to see if this structure can help me figure out um, something. So let's set this up. I'm going to do absolute value of x squared minus 5x plus 4. I'm going to subtract negative 2. Now, when I do this, um, I'm going to work this down. I'm going to see that this equals x squared minus 5x and it's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6. Now, if I keep going with this, um, I, you're hopefully able to factor this, right? x minus 3 times uh, x minus 2. All right, so we get down here, and we're kind of keeping our eye on this. We know this thing has to be less than epsilon. Um, and maybe we're tempted to um, think, well, I'm just going to divide by x minus 2, all right, the absolute value of x minus 2. Because if you're familiar with these proofs at least a little bit, uh, you know that you have to deal with the absolute value of uh, x minus 3. Because if you look up uh, here, right, as, as x approaches 3, we know that when we're dealing with our delta, this neighborhood has to be uh, defined by this, all right, by our choice of delta. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a three here, not a two. Sorry about that. Um, and so we know, we're keeping this in mind. So I, I want to get this. I mean, I want, I want this, and I want to be able to figure out what my, you know, my delta is for it. Well, maybe I would think to do something like this. However, you know, and maybe I'd say, well, delta is equal to, you know, this. But I don't want delta to be a function of x. I want it to be a constant. So I need to find some way to deal with the absolute value of x minus 2. So what we're going to do uh, in this case so we can kind of um, eliminate the absolute value of x minus 2 is we're going to think uh, for a moment about delta. We are allowed to actually restrict delta to what we want. So we're actually going to do this. We're going to let delta be less than or equal to 1. Well, if this is true, if delta is less than or equal to 1, what we're able to do is take this statement, right? And I, and I know that I'm going to say that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. Because if delta is less than or equal to 1, that means this thing has to be less than 1. All right, well, if this is true, guys, using um, what we know about absolute values, we know that this leads us to negative 1. Uh, is less than x minus 3, which is less than 1. You're allowed to do that to drop the absolute values. You take this number that is less than, and you make it a negative on the left side and keep it positive on the right, drop the absolute values in the middle. It has to be less than as you read from left to right. Well, when I do this, I'm going to add 3 to all, all of these, right? I'm going to add 3, add 3, if you remember solving inequalities. And what we're going to get, we're going to get 2 is less than x, which is less than 3. Okay, which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you're thinking about uh, the x-axis, you're at 1, 2, at 3, right? 3 is our c value here, in, according to the definition, right? And you're, with, you're restricting delta to being within, uh, you know, delta is less than or equal to 1. So really, the neighborhood, um, you know, delta, we're saying, hey, it could be in here, right? Which is from uh, 2 to 4. Now, that's when delta is less than or equal to one, but really these are these are, should be bracketed, I guess, um, like this. Um, because we're, when we're over here, we're seeing it's less than, and it can't equal it. So 
um, hopefully that makes sense, is that the x's then, based on this restriction, the x values are going to have to be between 2 and 4. All right, well, if that's true, if the x values have to be between 2 and 4, when I get to this statement, x minus 2, let's think about it for a moment. Okay, well, let's actually take away the absolute values right now. Let's just, let's think about um, just x minus 2. What has to be true about x minus 2? All right. Well, think. I can go from 2 to 4, right? So at the high end, x could be 4. So this thing must be less than 4 minus 2. It must be less than 2. Has to be. Has to be less than 2. Okay? Be because I only have x's between 2 and 4, and the highest value I have is a 4. So if I have the highest value, well, it's not even 4. It's going to be, it can't even equal 4. But we know that this has to be less than 2. Well, what that does is that leads us then to say this. We could say the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 2. We know that it has to be true. If this is true, the absolute value um, will also be true. Okay? That's important for us. All right now, working off of this. So let's go back and look at uh, this right here. x minus 3, the absolute value of x minus 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay, we're going to look at this. If this is true, right? This thing is going to have to be less than the absolute value of x minus 3 times 2. Because if this thing's less than 2, then that means if I'm going to times x, the absolute value of x minus 3 by 2, this statement right here must be less than that. Okay? So since this is the case, guys, I know that this thing that I'm dealing with needs to be less than epsilon. As I'm working through it. This is against my scratch work. So what's going to happen is this is going to lead us to, to this choice of delta here. I'm going to do absolute value of x minus 3. It's less than epsilon over 2. Okay? And that's um, important here. So let's, let's look at what we have. So first of all, I, I've made this statement here, right? And I've made this statement here. So what I have to do, th these are both my deltas. I've, I'm choosing these two deltas. I have to do a special choice here. I'm going to say I'm going to let delta equal the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2. Whichever one's smaller, that's the one I'm going to choose, OK? If the epsilon's a big epsilon, like someone, your you know, friend or something comes to you and says, hey, I want epsilon to be 10. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So actually, 1 is smaller. I'm going, to, I'm going to choose 1 that is my delta. But if they come and they say, well, I want epsilon to be 1. Well, if epsilon is 1, that's going to be 1 over 2. It's a half. And I'm going to choose 1 half as my delta and then not choose 1. OK? So we're doing our choice of delta a little bit differently than we've done in the past. We're actually going to make it a minimum between these two choices. All right? It's going to be nice. It's going to work out well in our proof. So. Let's get to the actual formal proof. That was just scratch work that's setting us up. All right, here we go. Let's get to the actual formal, formal proof of this. All right, so let me see if I have this. So here's our example. I'm gonna bring it back up. Let's make a formal proof of this, okay? So here we go. So let me prove this to you. So we're gonna say, hey, here's our proof. So we're going to say this, given right, epsilon greater than 0, given that this is true, what I want to do is I want to choose delta to equal the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2. All right? So I'm going to do that. Now, once we establish that choice, Let's make a couple other statements. Let's say this. Let x belong to the real numbers such that okay, 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3, which is less than delta, which equals the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2. Okay. Sorry, let me write minimum in there. Kind of jotted that out there. So minimum of that. <clears throat> All right. So since this absolute value 
of x minus 3 is less than 1, uh, it follows that um, negative 1 is less than x minus 3, which is less than 1. And so we know, right? And so 2 is less than x minus 4. Okay? And now for this, so let's say this. So for all x in the interval from 2 to 4, like we just shown. So for all x in this interval, now this is an this is uh, important move. x minus 2 has to be less than 2, which means that and so the absolute value must be less than 2. All right, now, since we know this, this is very important. So since, then we're going to do this, since uh, we know also, now this is true, x, uh, absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 2. Since this is true, watch Watch what happens. So since this happens, we have this. We start with our x squared, right? The absolute value of x squared minus 5x plus 4 minus negative 2, right? What we originally had. I'm going to work this down in my proof. Equals the absolute value of x squared. Sorry, it's minus. Okay, so minus 5x is going to be plus 6. Uh, equals the absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. Okay. And what do we know about this? Well, we know this, this absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 2. So that means this statement right here has to be less than 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. Okay. And that, in turn, since I also know that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 2, I know that. I can say that that thing has to be less than 2 times epsilon over 2. And I know that that simplifies to epsilon. Okay. All right. So therefore, okay, we know that, right, this original function we took, right, minus the limit we were thinking about here, must be less than epsilon. That's our proof. Okay, so a little bit more complex than a linear scenario, but still doable. All right, guys, hope you have a good night. Let me know if you have any questions.